yeah, like I just said, we are here immediately again. <laughs> um, but before we start this game, we actually prepared something on the um, discussion um, thing I uh, prepared. So, like you might have already noticed, we are working together with RK9 Lab for this regional championship. And they have a really nice feature that allows uh, people from the back end to just see the deck archetype. So they mm -hmm. have a, a predefined list to um, yeah, see which kind of deck the people are playing. They have like predefined rules. Um, and this allows them to always use uh, metagame charts. And we would mm -hmm. like to show you this chart now. Um, so you have to switch to the scene called Discussion <laughs> uh, really quick. So uh, once we have that up, you can see which kind of decks are being played at this regional championship. And then maybe you can ask some questions as well, if yeah. you feel like it. So, so the most played deck, Mew to End Mew. Well, uh, the thing is, it, it was weird, right? Going into the format, a lot of people think it was the best, but I don't think anyone was expecting it not just to be the most played, but by look by how much. Well, actually, not. Like no, not that's a big chunk. Like, that's I a, mean that's it's a good few percent, which for a deck that... Oh, yeah. Like, if, 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 if this was the pie chart, you'd go, that's a big slice of pie. And it's just because it's just so strong. I think everyone's gone, it's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty good, pretty good deck. Uh, and just has been the most played deck across all the divisions th this weekend. Um, followed by Guardi, which... That really surprises me, to be honest. Yeah, that was uh, something I saw. Like th that was the first time that came into my mind when I saw it. I was like, okay, yeah, Mew to Mew. That was kind of expected. But Guardians, like I would have expected ADP to be high, or maybe Malamar, or Blacephalon, or maybe like I mean, Stolex are never played so much. Actually, on that note, Pidgeotto Control is really high compared mm. to like usually Stolex aren't so popular mm -hmm. because only people who are a little bit <laughs> you a little bit evil in their yeah. heart play them. And it's also <laughs> there are a lot of practice like yeah. sitting down to play a stall deck and learning how to play a stall deck is actually pretty difficult but it, it's actually an interesting piece of information to have yeah. uh, is that like it's actually a really popular deck yeah there are also quite a lot Malamar decks I mean that's never a surprise and in Europe yeah we, I know, mean, Malamar, we, we like our squid yeah but Malamar is just very simple very cool deck you can do a lot of it um, and yeah, but nothing too crazy, I think. So mm -hmm. now you have this, you can uh, do with what you want. There are actually six people playing fossils that we just saw. And there are also, I think, I would, I think Luke is under others. <laughs> um, but yeah. I yes, would I'm going to put him under others somewhere. Um, as we're actually getting close to uh, ready for the game. Um, and we've gone from... Yeah, I'll, I think we should start with Chrysovalantis Amanatidis. Yeah. Um, someone I know really very well. He is the German national champion because he won <laughs> the very yeah, last exactly. German national championship uh, in, I think, 2016, that was or, or 15. I don't know. I, w I remember watching it from home yeah, and I was played, like, it's he played, uh, <laughs> he played Seismi Toad. Um, but yeah, yeah. now so this, this deck, this g actually that national is uh, older than the Limitless database, so yeah, it doesn't show up here. But you can see that he has a lot of uh, finishes at all, like a lot of players don't actually f fill all the four spaces. Um, he got a bunch of top, th like a few top 32s. You can also see that his latest and best results actually match up with each other. So that usually means that these are the only results or maybe there is one very old one, very low one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, And Ole is also someone who is very familiar. I actually um, German Nationals 2014 and was in this uh, in this location, and I played against Ole, and I lost. <laughs> well, so we actually I, I we skipped it, but we'll come back to it later. We have his profile too, and there's two of, um, events in there that are more recent than that as well. Like I think Malmo was one of them. Oh yeah, he so still like he still plays so he a lot. He still plays a lot. Um, um, but we see what well, is basically I'm going to call this like an old school matchup. We got some Mali and we got some Picaro, um coming down, as we see in case start for Ole. Uh, yeah. Oh, and, and it's the perfect discard as well, right? It's like a free Giratina. And you can see, uh, let's take a short look at the price cards of both pairs because they are quite interesting. So first of all, for Chriso, um, he has a, a Prison Star price, which is always really annoying because Pikachu and Zikram wants to attack as fast as possible. And if you price Tapu Koko, it's really difficult to get the turn one, um, turn one full blitz because you need three energy cards, and with the stadium, you still need two, which is impossible to get. Um, so that's why, yeah, you want uh, the Tapu Koko as well. But on Ola's side, he has uh, three, three Pokemon communication prize, yeah. and I think also one Mysterious Treasure, one Malamar, and the Symphia. So a lot of consistency cards. 
uh, missing from his deck currently, which is usually a big deal for Malama because yeah. from like Malama decks just want to set up, and then they are quite happy. There, like they exist, yeah, and they just attack. They're like, okay, I got my my Ink Boys here, Giratina, <laughs> Energy attack, yeah, and the opponent is like. Well, I guess knockout, and then the Malama is like, like no problem, <laughs> the boys got your back, Giratina, let's go, squid squad, switch, attack again, and there's uh, like, it's just always the same turn, um, most of the time. And I see Marco shaking his head, he does not like Malama <laughs> from what I get. Um, however, well, I'm not opposed to Malama, actually, um, I play a lot of electric. Like eels, so yeah, which had sure. the same ability, but uh, <laughs> that was that was a better deck, though. I like that one. But they are both weird, like aquatic, squishy <laughs> animals. So maybe that's the reason why they can accelerate energies. But so um, we see a spell I don't know. As well. So all right, so all this first turn looks very standard. You got yeah. um, two. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put it up so people know what we're on about. This is the old electric. Uh, um, it was Ray Eels was the blast from the past. But yeah, all right. So um, we see all this first turn. Inke, actually Inke is supposed to be a pawn on Inke. Yeah. They're like, I play Malama. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. And then we have uh, the Giratina, which has an energy, which is always nice, and also spell tag. Um, with the distortion door and spell tag, you can do a lot of interesting moves. You can move a lot of damage counters. So Malama actually has like, t I would say like two play styles that both exist at the same time. One of them is just Get Giratina back, Shadow Impact, get Giratina back, Shadow Impact. You just attack, 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 attack. But with Spell Tag and Distortion Door, you can put a lot of damage counters somewhere on yeah. your opponent's side. And because it's a Psychic deck, you can often play a one-off of um, Deoxys Espeon, which actually Ole does not No, do. so he's actually going for the kind of... This is actually the version that we've seen switched in. Like, this is the one people have preferred. Yes. Uh, with the Trevenar and Duskwa uh, GX, um, which is the promo. Mm. Uh, does, uh, which um, one of the options is, I know it's GX attack is you are knocked out next turn that is basically it yeah um, but the attack gets rid of the opponent and gets rid of two cards, cards from their hand cards yeah. I think it shoves it back into their deck which is kind of like you can play a disruption pattern as well and then you have the one of um, Garchomp Giratina which with the distortion door ability from Giratina you beautifully set up by going 10 here also 240 yeah. and it just makes it actually really aggressive if it needs to hit these big numbers because historically Mali de de like the problem that a lot of people had with Malamar and playing Malamar at a regional is not that it's not a good deck it's just inherently quite slow and it it's also inconsistent like yeah. with decks that use a lot of non-GX Pokemon even like that was a large deal with like in the past because the game takes a lot of time which is also why I think they focus on GX and Tag Team and now mm -hmm. Pokemon V Max with three prize cards it's just because the game takes so long and they try to make the games just a little bit quicker but if like if both players need six turns of knockout, addition mm -hmm. like plus the turns where you're with your knockout, um, the game just takes so long, and this is kind of a problem with Melly uh, on top of that, and it's a little bit inconsistent, I would say, uh, because it, you need to evolve. And basic Pokemon is you have a basic Pokemon, you have attacks, attach, attack, you're there. Yes. But Malamar needs a lot of like it needs the right cards early. Like after that, you're fine, but yeah, your starting hand is uh, very crucial. And now we see, uh, yeah, Chris's turn was kind of uneventful, right? Uh, until now, he played Volknar. Uh, now we see Electromagnetic Radar for um, Raichu, Raichu, and the Dana. So this is um, currently this is a year of the mouse. And yeah. Um, with the um, yeah Japanese calendar, the Chinese <laughs> one is not uh, New Year's yet. So very uh, fitting here. Pikachu, Raichu, Raichu, anti Dana, all the mouse guys uh, come here. 5-0, Criso and Ola are the only 5-0s right now. And the winner of this match is probably, like, if it's not it's a tie, yeah. going to be the only 6-0. Yeah, he did attach an energy, but like we said, um, Tabu Koko's prized, so he's, there's no way for him to attack, uh, attack this turn. So. Yeah, so I actually, so I have never been someone who, it's not the kind of deck I want to play with Pikachu. So preparing for tournaments, it's always a case of, right, I know some people love this deck. And he's like, right, I'm going to have to ask them a few questions because I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the, how this has changed. And basically what they've, what the, the gist of it is, is that now they actually prefer the Thunder Mountain instead, which he's got um, in play. Um, uh, like that's the one that you can't afford to be prized. Like they've actually moved now that you can actually afford to prize the Tapu Koko Prism slightly more because you, because you can now search with Guzmahala for your Thunder Mountain. Yeah. Like you, it's, it's more consistent hitting it, and it's the one that like more often than not like okay, if that's prized, we're in bad shape. But 
Otherwise, I'd actually rather. No, like I just I just meant the Coco yeah. because um, you cannot attack this turn, which sure. would in theory be possible because Coco can attach two energy and then you can attach one to Pikachu and Zekrom and then use an energy or attack switch, in theory. But yeah, this option was not available for Crystal, but he got still a pretty nice start. He retreated the Jirachi, just saving that. Um, the Dedenne might get some chip damage here from a Shadow Impact, which then might have put it in danger, but I think Rizzo is just trying to make sure that he still has his consistency. I don't think there is else. Sorry. Uh, there is actually, his hand looks actually pretty nice. Yeah, so from, from Ole's point of view, the, the Dedenne, hit, if you can hit the 130 in the Dedenne, it's really nice because it gives you a really clear and obvious place to put your uh, spell tag damage. Yes. Because it means that you can just put three of those on there at any given point, and that's two prize cards. And you can actually kind of force checkmate situations with this. You're going, look, if you take this KO on the Giratina, I can take potentially my last two prize cards and force your, uh, your opponent to go, well, I can't do that. And since most decks are now playing great catches as opposed to uh, custom catches, you kind of have no choice. You have to take the KO on what's given to you. Yeah, also, um, Ole actually plays the Blacephalon from, like, I mean, I think pretty much everyone plays <laughs> the Blacephalon from uh, Cosmic Eclipse. Um, but that's also just really nice to just, like, not take the knockout on the um, Jidane, even if it gets damage now. Yeah. Like, just put some damage counter somewhere, and then in the late game, you can maybe take a knockout on a tag team and the Jidane as well. However, Ole did not get uh, the attack, so this is uh, probably a very nice for Chriso. We see a um, choice helmet. I think, is it? Yep, choice yeah. helmet um, and, and another switch. switch. So, so that's actually two switch gone already, which is okay in this particular matchup, but you, it's one of those items you like keeping available so you can move your attackers around when you need to. Um, so we see a set of wish. I see not an awful lot of any particular interest in there. Oh, this is his hand. Ah, that's his hand? Wish is the rest. Ah, okay. Yeah. Let's see what's in there. Faulkner, that yeah. seems like a pretty good choice. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Um... um so Faulkner, you can just get an energy and then also an item card, depending on what he really wants. I don't think there is too much he wants. Maybe something for next turn, prepare. Yeah. Um, switch. Or I mean, it's, it's very rare that you don't want to take anything in the situation of just like, well, oh wait, he, did he get stamped? Oh yeah, I forgot he got stamped. Okay. So because he got stamped, he does not have the uh, yeah, stadium anymore. Set anymore. No. So now he wants to try and find an out, but there are no item search outs. He's not playing like a stadium nav, um, which would make it another another out. So he's just gonna have to live with energy and an item um, to maybe use next turn. Ah, uh, this is really unfortunate. No... There's no way for him to get into another Jirachi yeah, and there's switch. No, no switch for him, uh, no search for him to get uh, Stadium. So... Yeah. But maybe he can still wait a turn. I mean, Ole didn't get to attack, which was fine. Well, but now there is a Giratina active for him, so if he wants to attack, he needs to switch. Um, and this is actually one of the symptoms of like an issue with Mali, right? Is okay. Well, Chriso hasn't hit his ideal turn two, but what pressure has Oli put on to kind of go? Well, if you miss this turn two, we're going to run away with it. None is the answer to that question. Like he's got the he's one attachment away from this Giratina, but okay, he has to still move active. It looks like Ole doesn't have a supporter card because, yeah, he just passes. That's just Mali pass. That is but a. But there is a Jirachi on the bench. So, like, this is a very. <laughs> <laughs> Let's I try think again. This is a typical turn for Malama because it's really reliant. Like, most tag team decks, they can just play Didana and. Um, Get away with it. Charge ball. So, that's kind of uh, all communication. Um, but, yeah, Malama, you can. There's no way you put Didana GX in this deck. So, you uh, need a lot of supporter cards. So, it's a really old school deck. In a way, because you have so much, so many supporter cards compared to other decks, but then also, um, well, they, uh, it's like it's it, the nice thing with Maui is once it's set up on board, it's not going anywhere. So it's not like yeah. the green stamp plant strategy can hurt you. Yeah, because like I mean, Ola didn't have a supporter card, but I think it's fine. Yeah, he has like two. He has two Malamar in play. Yeah, as soon as a KO gets taken, he just promotes the Jirachi, tries to find something, or if he has an energy in hand, he can just go attach. Okay, yeah. I'm fine, right? I just hit 130. Let's go. And kind of stop. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Chris will just... Chris is like, that's fine. Yeah. Just go for it. Um, Do your attach worst. some energy to Pikachu, and then Mike can maybe tag board, or maybe he takes it to... Yeah, I will tag board, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's going. Let's, let's like, go. Tag, tag board can just take a knockout on, on, uh, two. on Malamar, and if he plays... He's not playing custom catcher, so there's no way to take the, the, uh, double Malamar. Yeah, that, would, that was like the classic turn in this matchup where just like oh, let's just go for it. Yeah, and Ola he put the Jirachi active and this gave him now the option to 
Let's go for Cynthia. Uh, touching to the active. Yeah, this is like usually you're like ah. It's the last thing you want to do, right? Yeah, but you don't. You want to discard your energy and then attach them with Mama. Yeah. But now if he with you the energy, guarantee. there's no way for him to attack. So he really does need, um, yeah, the skateboard or switch now. Well, it's actually one of those things of like, what are the rules when you're learning the game and like getting good at the game is like, right, things that you can do once per turn, do last. Like, use your supporter as late into the turn as you can get away with. Attach your energy as late as possible. But you also have to learn when to not do that to make sure that you actually have your outs available. Um, I see a communication. I see another NK, so we can get three NK out. Or is he going to put it, put it back? Or not. Really depends. Well, he's got a treasure as well, so he actually has a few options uh, of the search. He may as well discard this energy. Yeah, this energy is not going to. Like, yeah. He actively doesn't want it in his hand. He wants it in his discard pile. Like, he doesn't need it. Um, potentially. If he benches, like, if he benches Mew, then yeah. he can prevent Tech Bolt from doing a lot True. of damage. Because with the Mew in play, it doesn't really. Like, the Tech Bolt isn't really an attack. Yeah, you might as well go back to Full Blitz. Yeah, it's just a Full Blitz that is worse. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but there's. Yeah, I don't know if there now with the Mew in play if there's actually any useful GX attack for Crystal. No, because everything's taking a one hit KO and that doesn't have a useful secondary effect for him. Um, so. Alright, so we see Switch. Malamar in play now. Uh, I mean, Giratina ready to go, puts damage on itself like you would expect. Um, the 80, like getting. Now it has 90 HP, it doesn't matter yeah. because. Pikachu and Zekrom will always take the knockout. So, to see an Absol picked up by Crystal, which is actually a really big card in this matchup, because yes. the, really what it is, game plan is in the ideal world, draw with you with the, with the skateboard on it, and you just take the KO, he can just keep putting it back for free, but also get a search. Well, suddenly, if Absol hits the board, that's just not on anymore because of the um, ability basically turning off or well, increasing the retreat by just enough to make that not a possibility. Yeah, a lot of people play like a one-off Absol in Pikachu Ron because it just messes with the opponent's Jirachi. But Crystal plays three. We, we what? Yeah, he's like Absol is like Absol oh, he is really his does. guy. Yeah. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> he also plays two Dangerous Drill. Yeah, but this is the reason, right? Yeah, so but... Wow. You can use Faulkner for Dangerous Crew, then discard Absol, and then just go for it. He also plays Hoopa, uh, two Hoopa actually, so um, Dangerous Drill is a pretty strong card, I would yeah. say. Um, getting rid of the tool. So especially in these situations of like going, right, cool, you have a skateboard? Nope. And then with the three Absol, they're really definitely not retreating. Because like it's probably the most commonly played um, the tool right now is a skateboard. Um, I guess Karate Belt is also the other one that you might want to be discarding in Mirrors. Yeah. Um, Until we see Dangerous Drill. <laughs> did, you, and, uh, did you play it? And, and only going, but what's a Dangerous Drill do? <laughs> so Dangerous Drill, discarding the um, spell tag, preventing Ola from doing anything weird with that. And it's such, a, it's such an interesting card. It can discard special energy. Yeah. It's like half a Zeratic. But without the support, it's like it's, it's kind of like a Sarasic without the uh, support bit, right? Um, which is kind of cool because that was a, that was a super good card when it was standard. Even still is in the expanded for like special uh, energy heavy uh, formats. So the fact that you can kind of have the reach to go right there goes your rainbow, there goes your weak guard, or your draw energies or whatever. Like it makes it much much easier to kind of choose. But also the ability to get rid of tools means that in mirrors, massive deal for um, like things like Choice Helmet. That they might be playing against Guardi. You don't care if they put the spell tag in. You just get rid of it. You can yeah. get rid of it more times than they can play it. Um, so they can really put, put an awful lot of pressure on and kind of squeeze through some matchups where the, the tools actually make a big difference. So we see another Volkner. And it's a switch. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a lot of energy to have to pick up to retreat. Um, yeah, but I don't really know what Crystal is able to do on top of that because like, he just wants to... Like, he just wants to tag each turn, I think. Yeah. Just get as many energy as he can. Yeah. Um, every Pokemon will get to it knocked out. He's just gonna... No, not taking energy this time, which either means he doesn't have one, which is not true. Oh, no, he, did, he took one as well. He, there's also an argument to leave them in, because if you're just gonna be um, bolting them out, out in a minute anyway, you can just leave them and just, uh, you know, uh, turbo striking, just put them all back on. Um, yeah. And now Crystal is going for the... Um, Full Blitz. Full Blitz, being able to take out the knockout on the Skiratina. Um, so there is now a heavily damaged, like, I mean, this is a half, half HP mm -hmm. uh, Pikachu Zekrom on the bench. 
uh, yep. which just what's happened to Aaron? <laughs> uh, I think Trezor's just tidying it up. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering like what, what why is he, he doing, doing this? But, but no, yeah. Um, but um, yeah. So now it's like half damage on the bench. And Ola really needs a way to get um, the Drache out of the active spot. And like we discussed earlier, it doesn't have an energy attached, it has no escape board, but even if you have the escape board, you still would need an energy. Um, but Ola always needs to, currently, with the, this board state, um, Ola needs to attach his energy to Giratina. Mm -hmm. So um, she cannot use escape board to retreat the Drache this turn, so he really, really needs to switch. And if he whiffs that, then he can't attack, and this wins Trissel turn. And even if he does get it, it's the same thing next turn, unless he gets an NK this, uh, unless he gets an NK now. Mm -hmm. um, but well, it's even then, it's gonna. This is the point where it starts not being enough, because Crystal's two prizes ahead. And okay, you might take three, but you have to two hit KO at a minimum to get those, and it becomes progressively harder and harder to keep doing it, especially now with an Absol in play. So. Chris always find a nice, neat way of going, right, okay, I'm not being hit this turn, which means I've taken three prize cards to your none. And he's kind of too far ahead at that point in most games. Yeah, uh, and we see another problem, actually, again. Like <laughs> like last turn, there's no supporter card in all his hand. Yeah. And he just Stella wished for communication, so it seems... Well, it looks like the squids have tied themselves up in knots. The tentacles are all entangled. Yeah, exactly. it can't, It's not going anywhere. Um, as he's just like, oh, I guess I uh, put these I damage counters here. I put some damage somewhere. I don't think it's too relevant where. Um, now he can use Malamar to attach and then... Well, I guess the nice thing is, is he can manual attach next turn and then manage it. Um, so he can like manual to the Jirachi if he doesn't use the celebration just retreat. So at least he can... Oh, no, he can't. They still absolve. So he, yeah. he, he needs to still find another escape board. Yeah, uh, now he plays. Actually, this is really hurtful because he discards an uh, ink of the uh, Viridian to get a, a psychic energy from his deck into his hand. And this psychic energy is really, like for him, it's important because it's the one extra energy attachment that he really needs. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just going straight for the. Yeah, he doesn't have any hand cards. Yeah. So, really unfortunate. Yeah, the sleep doesn't matter. So, we might even see another drill. Because there's multiple copies of this dangerous drill in Chris's deck. If he has a second, um, if, he w if he feels the spell tag is a problem, it's but a, it's a the spell tag's fine. I think we can leave that one there. We're just going to keep it in case he does get in the skateboard eventually. Yeah. But and there's, I don't think there is a special energy. No. Like no. Ola doesn't play. A, like a lot of Malamas play the. It was a recycle energy. Recycle energy. Yeah. But I think now, like he's using the Garchomp Giratina version. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. The recycle energy was for the. Uh, Ultra and Necrozma one that did extra yeah. damage if it had special energy attached. Um, but now, instead, just okay, just power plant it. <laughs> Lily, it's like, this is how you draw cards. Um, he actually has the Dangerous Jewel in hand. But I don't think he has a... No, he, there's no Absol yet, on, so. but yeah, he has it ready. And I think he's just... You just attack here, right? I think I would I would just attack, definitely. Just take the attack, hold the hand cards, see what... Ole, it, like, he, uh, he's forced to do something. And um, now it looks with deck, he has true energy left. Yep. And because of the Tapu Koko Prism Star, he can f charge the completely new Pikachu and Zekrom later in the game. So this Pikachu Zekrom on the bench will just stay on the bench. And this is uh, always a bench Pokemon. It might get knocked out, I think, by the um, Blacephalon. Um, the Blacephalon, only, uh, only if he can Blacephalon exactly this turn. Yeah, I was just saying. Uh, like, uh, the Blacephalon could take the knockout now, and that would be pretty helpful, I guess, but also not too relevant since, uh, yeah, so it's 12 damage counters. Yep. And so the firework, Fireworks Bomb would be uh, enough to do enough damage, but only this turn. Yes. Which means that he has to find a way of switching, which doesn't seem particularly likely. I mean, he's playing copies of, like, physical copies of Switch, so he could switch that way. Um, but he has to hit the Blacephalon and or enough energy. I mean, Blacephalon should not be too unlikely. I mean, we know that he has a bunch of consistency cards prized, but yeah, with the... Yeah, um, there's no search for... Uh, well, there's still treasures, but I think he might have used three treasures already and he's prized the other one. He definitely played two, but I think there's... Yeah, I think there's one left. Okay, there's one there. Yeah, here it is. So, let's see if... Oh, he has seen... Oh, he has a switch on his hand as well. Yeah, so okay. So, he doesn't have... 
and he, and he has the double mana man. I think there's enough energy if, in discard. If he wants to, he can. He can also just. Now, yeah. You can also just do um, the fighting from hand because there's definitely at least one psychic in discard that I've seen. So he can actually hit the fireworks bomb this turn. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. Um, Takes three prize cards. I, th I don't think it's like too crazy, but it saves him one energy attachment. Yeah, it really helps bring it back to kind of catching up. It's a three prize card turn. Unfortunately, that's the only three prize card turn. It looks like particularly likely to get because in doing the 120 to the uh, the bench speaker on, or you can you can put one damage counter somewhere else. Right. Yeah. And that feels that's not gonna make enough of a difference to the rest of the board state, I don't think. Yeah, and also this Persephalon is not too relevant, I think, because Crystal can always just um, bench another Pikachu there. Oh, well, well he probably only plays two, right? Yeah, he only plays yeah, two. Yeah, he only plays so two. Once that's done, but um I, mean, you I think yeah, I think it would have been probably stronger to take like take this knockout after the active Pikachu Zekrom, but of course it's not possible. Mm -hmm. Um because now Crystal can just use like attack once more, and then yeah, um, yeah. You char charge, the, um, charge the charge the right to right. Yeah, the two the two hits from uh, from being KO. Yeah, and we should not forget the, that Chris actually plays Hooper. Oh, um, okay. Because so this is now damage. really strong because every Pokemon except the Cephalon mm -hmm. uh, on Ola's board has an ability, and also the Cephalon's weak to yeah weak to darkness. If you want to add to that even more, <laughs> um, straight away so Chris is like Chris right, stamp. If he's able to switch, he can just promote um, Jirachi. And then if he gets the Hoopa, he can attack with it. Yeah. Um, Ole actually still has an option where he could use the Trevenant and Duskwana GX um, and hope that Crystal is out with switch options. And basically use the GX attack and, you know, make sure that they're locked and KO'd. That would be a way of taking three ki prize cards on the active um, in a single turn. But he doesn't have any other options um, using the Pale Moon GX um, right now. Uh, so, Chris, so I don't think I see an out for his Hooper there. I, don't, I mm. definitely don't see it in this hand. This hand doesn't look really great. No way to get another. Um, no way to get another attacker. I think mm -hmm. so. He's kind of forced to just go for it. Yeah, on I the think active, I so. Say. Um, he can play the Tapu Koko down. But you might as well. Well, he just Tapu Koko Prism Star um, and Thunder Mountain, which, which means that he, like out of nowhere a new attack can come out, which is actually really important because Pale Moon Jacks can also discard a lot of energy if it has extra en psychic energies on it. So it could, in theory, put Chris in a position where he's running low on energy. We know that he has two left in deck, I think it was. So oh, one left in deck now, which means that if Ole does go for the Pale Moon Jacks with the secondary effect, even if Chris switches. He's out of energy for attackers, and it just means that Ole can just go, okay, I'll just now just do whatever damage I can for a few turns to take this this game. Yeah, th I think this game is still going to be really interesting. Like, even though Ole was, I think there were two turns where Ole didn't have any supporter cards. Yeah. There was even one turn where he just passed without any hand cards. Uh, but of course, yeah, this is how strong Jirachi is. And Crystal is actually going for the... Um, just go ahead not, and take not that knockout. Not but what does Full Blitz. Full Blitz, exactly. Um, take full the blitz, knockout, attach no energy. Full Blitz being strictly better here because you also get to pick up your deck and have a look at it just to go, and just yeah, as a sure. reminder, what's in here? What am I still working with? At this point, he'll know because there's not many cards left in his list, um, but it's still very helpful occasionally to be able to pick up the deck and go, right, just to make sure if I need this to win next turn, do I have it? Um, yeah, but now it's still all is still in a dominant position because he can just take a not to it knockout. Mm-hmm. And even if he doesn't take the two, uh, like even if Crystal takes a knockout on Giratina this turn, um, Ola can still always use something like Night Watch, Pale Moon, or just attack again because Crystal's mm -hmm. Crystal's definitely forced to get a new attacker if he takes a knockout on Giratina next turn. So yeah. let's say Ola takes his Giratina, that's uh, yeah 130 damage on Pikachu and Zekrom, um. and if Crystal takes a knockout, then he knows okay Giratina will just come back and take the knockout on Pikachu Zekrom. So Crystal wa would then need to get another attacker in play. That's a really big so miss on that Stellar Wish, though. Because oh, what did he get? We had a Cynthia, but really he needed to find... A like skateboard. A skateboard, right, because yeah. otherwise he's not moving. Um, but this way, there we go, we see the Trevenant uh, and does not come, that no, come down. No, this is uh, Garchomp Giratina. Oh, uh, this is the Garchomp Giratina. Yes. Okay, so he's going to go for the knockout if he can uh, find... Um, or he could even go for GG End. If he has the energy for GG End, he could actually just discard the Picarom. 
but what what the heck? I mean, well, he's out. Of, he's basically out of energy. Crystal's basically out of energy. But at this Crystal stage. still has both of his prison stars. Yeah, but um, he only yes. has one energy left in deck. Two, so he has two plus the prism mm -hmm. stars. So uh, he's actually quite running really low in terms of being able to do the damage. Yeah, but, but it could also just, just take a KO with Clement Slash. It because um, yeah, Giratina can put some damage counters, and the active Giratina still has spell tech. Yep. So all of what then just need, yeah, he has a Viridian in play already, and now. He can just uh, search for this last fighting energy card. Yep. So does he have a way of retreating the Jirachi? Because he has his manual attack return. There it is. Double psychic recharge for Calamity Slash because of the for damage counter on it and, yeah. from a Giratina about eight, nine turns ago. That one damage counter is enough yeah, so to basically take the game <laughs> um, where... It looked like he had a really slow start, but yes. now we see that actually by having a few of these tag team options available, which let you take these big one-hit knockouts, yeah. it really means you can catch up quite aggressively. No, I think this is just the matchup because Pikachu, like to win this, Pikachu and Zekrom needs to do so much. Mm -hmm. um, like your Pokemon get two-hit knocked out, but you give up two, pr uh, three prize cards, and then exactly, yeah, yeah, and it's. You, you're one hit knockouting something, but that's the game plan. They can deny your way around that because they can just deny Tag Bolt by playing the copy of Mew. They can also set up things like that single hit from the Giratina into a Blacephalon on the right turn. There's no way for you to play around that. If, that if, you know, you have to go down to three prize cards because as soon as they play the Mew, you have no choice but to take singles. It's actually a really fine line you have to walk as the Picaron player and you also have to kind of hope a little bit it, that the Malamar does sometimes what Malamar is known to do admittedly um, in terms of its uh, kind of its output um, I did say earlier we actually had a profile um, oh yeah we, we can actually, just show we actually it have it um, so, so uh, Ole uh, did well in both or at least according to our database he's probably done well at other events that aren't yeah. on there um, he's done well at, but, but with Malmo last year uh, a couple of years ago now and uh, also at Leipzig yeah uh, playing decks that, you know, sort of also required a bit of setup. Not quite the same level. Like, Volcanian was just like, okay, I'm just going to put a load of Volcanians on my bench. What are you going to do? Um, and Buzzrock, uh, both powerhouses in their formats. Um, yeah, but as you can also see, um, like, for the Limitless, I like, the Limitless era, like, yeah. ever since the... Yeah, the Cash era. Uh, yeah, ever since the... Um, Website exists. Um, ha hasn't been too much uh, going for Ola. I think he, he like he plays a lot of league cups, but I don't even think he plays so many regional championships at all. Mm -hmm. But this is Germany. And yeah, just, why not, right? He could just drive you by yeah. a train. Uh, I mean, that's what most people here. I mean, yeah, everyone so I've spoken easy, to is like, like oh, I just kind of walked here. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it's nice for some, isn't it? Um, I mean, I, I didn't have to pay any money to come here. <laughs> exactly. I could just go take the train. I have my <laughs> ticket that I always use. Um, so that's really nice, unless, um, yeah, but let's focus on this game here. So, Jirachi start for Chriso, the dream for any Pico on player. Really nice, and also he went first. This is something that went really wrong last game, because he didn't even get a turn two full blitz. He had a turn three Yeah, to and manually attach all of them. You also really need to do things like, but so again, if, if your opponent doesn't have a good start, you have to be able to punish it. And last game, we saw both kind of have slightly stuttery starts but neither could op like neither player could do anything about it they just had to go okay um also you and if you can get a decent start which just by opening jirachi you kind of default to having a fairly decent start um especially with access to the radar to go and get your Dedene plus something else if you want it um like it looks like, and he has, has a Lily in hand to draw up to eight cards. Like it's already a much, much better start for Chriso. Um, he's just seeing what he wants to take off his radar. It'll probably be a Dedene and the other Picarom. You may as well. Those are your two um, options in this matchup. I th did he not take anything? It he's prized his. Like he prized his Thunder Mountain. Um, Wait, does he have a lily? He has a lily anyway, yeah, so he was just thinning. So I mean, he could also have taken the other Picarom, I think, benched it, I think and then played the lily. I think there's an argument to make because of the Giratina damage. That it makes sense not. to maybe not bench if you don't have to. But then sure. on the other hand, at some point you have to bench it. And it's really unlikely to bench and attack in the same. I mean, w well, actually you can with, yeah. t uh, with the attack switch. So, yeah. 
which would be fine. So, poor communication. Both players' prize cards um, considerably smoother, at least for Ole. The Thunder Mountain being in the prize cards for Chris has been that in like both games, one of his options to yeah. get the aggressive start is missing. And that's just got to be a real pain. You know, that's, that's just making everything slightly more awkward than you'd really want it to be. Yeah, prizing a normal one-off is like 10%. Um, like, uh, yeah. So it will happen in a few games. But back-to-back, -back it's always like, oh, feels bad, man. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Um, but instead... Okay, it's a fairly nice board, right? The Absol straight away, which means that, or this Jirachi is definitely staying in the active. Um, but to be honest, Ole was wasn't going to be retreating at this turn, but he, Ole did actually start the Mew as well this time. So, uh, like, not having to invest a resource to go grab the card means there's more cards to use to go get more Inke, more of your Malamar part parts, Placephalon later if you want it. You know, it, it gives you a much better start and m m many more options. Um, just having a look, I think he has basically one of each of his psychic types at the bottom there. All, uh, you know, all happen to be next to each other. So, oh, great, cool. I'll take um, one of you. I, I, probably an Inke here. I'm going to establish the baby squids uh, before um, evolving them ne in the next couple of turns. But looking to basically stick to the game plan from last time. Let him take three prize cards. And take three prize cards back using the Giratina. Yeah, so all uh, like I don't know, benching the Mew so early seems kind of weird, but also there's no way for you to use the bench space anyway, so if you have it, you can just put it down as well. Um, but maybe this game actually goes a bit smoother for Olo on the supporter side mm -hmm. because um, missing yeah, two. Last, yeah, last last game was weird, weird because. But it was like it's a typical Malama game. You, at some point, you whiff your supporter card. But once the Malamas and Giratinas are already in play, mm -hmm. it's not too relevant. And now we see a Lily, um, as long as it's still possible, Lily for eight um, yeah. with the new rules. It's like, got to enjoy it while it's at last, right? Yeah. And I'm like, right, I'm going to leave for eight. Wee! Um, and with the new rules, you can still do it, but only if you go second. So. Yeah. Um, but the Mew. Benched. And there's actually an argument um, that Ole started the Mew knowing now. Like, it, this is game two, right? Like, you've seen a lot of Chriso's deck. And at a certain point, you must, you probably work out that there were situations where if Chriso had the option to have used Custom Catcher, and we're still playing Custom Catchers, not great catchers, you would have worked that out. Yeah. Which means that you can go, cool, I can just play this Mew. This Mew's fine. Yeah, like, it's very unlikely that Crystal has any like, custom catcher. Yeah, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have hit them that well. Yeah. Um, so we see spell like tag. Like usually if you even like if you play four custom catcher or even just three, you reveal one at some point yeah. just randomly because discarding yeah, it. Yeah, you play the Denner and um, a bunch of stuff that just discards hands, uh, hand cards. So yeah, not all can be pretty sure that there is no custom catcher in Crystal State. So here and we his see his first turn looks really nice. Yeah, um, this is actually really good. Giratina on the discard pile, energy card in play. A couple of inkays. Um, Jachi start. Basically, what you want. Uh, you've got the spell tag ready, so you can just make the attachment. Probably not immediately. He's probably now going. Hang on, there are drills in this deck. <laughs> Maybe I'll hold the. Oh no, okay, no, no. he's oh, just going for it. Ignore me. Whatever. Um, just gonna throw throw it down and immediately just go right. It's Maybe, go ahead, use one of these drills on my spell tag. Yeah, I dare whatever. you. <laughs> one episode less, I guess. Yeah. So, well, we saw it actually doesn't matter to the maths of how this matchup can okay, go. Okay, now this turn is really important again, because Trizzo wants to attack. Yep. And for attacking, he needs um, Tavo Coco or Prism Star. Since yeah. The and he has to Thunder discard. Mountain no, is the 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 card. He was able to discard an energy with Ola's uh, Viridian City. And now it's just... Yeah, get your shovel. Well, he's, got dick. A he's got a Volkner. So if he has a Pokemon in hand, he can always communication for the Coco. Yeah, let's see. So he is actually going for. Boy, is he? Yeah. Or he's is taking he not? A, he's just double checking. I don't, I don't think there is a Pokemon in there. So he takes it, it in his hand. And then he plays it anyway. Yeah. Um, Maybe he's going for Cherish Ball? He's going to go Radar. Radar? Yeah, I mean Radar for um, the Dena and then just all in. Well, but then the energy probably doesn't really make a lot of sense because uh, yeah, might as well it gets dumped. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so instead now, it's a lot of cards to throw away. Like there's a lot of cards in there. Oh like, yeah, okay, he, he does go for it. He's actually, you know what? No, I want to take it. Um, oh no, he discards it from his hand. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 
Wait, but he took it from a stick, right? Like he did take I it. I think so. It looked really funny because he put it like he, he took, took it, one, he put, it, put it on top of the deck. There we go. And he then had when the he wanted to take it back, he oh, oh yeah, he Hooper. had the communication already in his hand. You can also go with Hooper to attack if he wants instead. Sure, yeah. The single price attacker. Fine. Yeah, that's. Uh -huh. uh, I totally agree with that. That should be. Like. The option using the single price attacker means that. Well. Gir Giratina Manama has always thrived on well I can win a prize trade because I do one prize every turn if I can take three I can keep up oh dangerous drill <laughs> he's is going he, for is it is he drilling is he, is he, is he going to make the punish for, for the uh, for the casual spell tag drill sergeant Amanatidas well he 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 may even be tempted to he could have done it just as like well if I'm going to discard my hand with a Dedene I may as well drill this turn right like yeah. I don't need to get rid of one of your uh uh, yeah, skateboards. but he used a different approach, and the Hoopa cannot be wanted knocked out by Giratina, right? Exactly, it has the resistance of Psychic, so means it's taking at least two prize cards in return for a single. Yeah, and which especially is much cleaner. Like, now that I think about it, using the Hoopa now makes more sense because um, this way there is no spell tag and there is mm -hmm. no damage on it, anyways. Mm -hmm. So, otherwise, like in other turns, like there might have been a spell tag being triggered by Hooper, mm -hmm. and then you can just put the damage on the Hooper and then take the knockout on Hooper. Mm -hmm. But now, this is not a possibility anymore. So, I think it's really nice to attack with the Hooper this turn. Yeah, so not playing a stamp, he's discarding a stamp with Viridian. Very important to make sure that yeah. if your opponent that you just don't go, wait, there's a stamp in the discard pile? Yeah, I'll I start remember, shuffling. I remember N. And yeah. Everyone's like, oh, N is the top card of your discard pile. Let's just shuffle my hand. Yeah, and then the it's like, all right, cool game loss. I'm like, um, oh, no. Yeah. Um, but all right, so we see a great catcher. Yep. Getting set up um, and slowly building a, a Giratina up. Um, but the great catcher is really nice, um, especially because Yep. I mean, Ole doesn't know, but um, there's a stadium is prized. Mm -hmm. So now for, because Tapu Koko only changed to bench Pokemon. Yeah, he'd have to switch Tapu Koko. So he Tapu needs Koko. an energy switch, or he needs to have a normal switch to go into Hoopa, but then if he loses a normal switch to switch into Hoopa, then again we are in the situation where there is a spell tag yep. on the active Giratina, and then the Hoopa will get, just get knocked out. So this is a pretty good turn uh, for Ole. Also he plays uh, Symphia, so supporter cards. Uh, no... Um, yeah, this time he has supporter cards. Yeah, he's finding them this time. Um, as we see, uh, there's a Sableye, I think, um, in his hand as well. Uh, just... Does he want to play any of these cards down? I mean, you've got you've got, you've got your squids. You might as well just hit, right? Like, just play until you get your Oh, he did whiff his energy. Oh, he whiffed it? Oh, Wait, no. What? So switch. Oh, this is like the worst case scenario, right? Yes, this really hurts. Because now it's going to be a retreat. You can just go for the... Like, if he has an out to Coco, well, he definitely does, because he can just communication to Zidane. Take himself a tap of Coco if he wants it. Oh, and another Absol. <laughs> really stick him in the active. No, this... Um, he has a drill in his hand, right? Oh, yeah, sure. So he's going to get rid of it, then take it with the uh, with the Hooper. Um, so discard... There goes another. Uh, it, it really is punishing this whole kind of plan of look. You've got to be careful with the spell tags because I can almost always remove the oh, one when I want to. This is so nice. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty hyped when, when he came over to yeah, us just before he was, was, like, was like, "I'm <laughs> going to play this." He came to me and was like, "Yeah, I play Dangerous Drill." I'm like, "Wait, wait, what?" <laughs> oh, uh, okay. <laughs> you, you then told me he said this, and I was like, "What does that card even do?" <laughs> That's really cool. Like, it's, it's, a cool a, it's an interesting card. I think it's pretty bad like in general but sure but it works it through here because it's the one of the only ways to get it's i think it's currently the only way to get rid of um tools uh, if you don't think about lysander labs sure so i mean it's something and um the other thing it can also discard special energy cards which might be relevant against uh, like adp yeah they're like oh hala guzma for rainbow also gets and then you're like with the rainbows uh volkner and then dangerous drill for you <laughs> really rainbow energy <laughs> I want to see the face of I know, I really, I really want to see like some of the uh, facial expressions of people going, wait, why is that in this list? Yeah, but this is really nice because now again, like last turn, Hooper is, uh, cannot be knocked out. Like, I mean, unless yeah. Ola wants to tag with the uh, Trevenant Dusknor or God, I think even Gotchen Gritchina could knock it out because of the there's no damage on it. So, so instead, like Trevenant Dusknor would be the only way to take the knockout here, but 
like, do you want to, to do what do you want yeah, to do? Yeah, not really, right? Now? Like, that doesn't sound like a good and now plan. And actually, everything Ole did last turn kind of backfired because uh, Crystal just got an extra energy attachment on his mm -hmm. Pikachu Zekrom as well. And now there is an NK active, which has extra retreat cost. Um, Ole already played a few of his switches, so... Yeah, yeah we're running out of options to move that NK from active. The Never mind, he found it. So you can actually take prize cards. Oh, uh, he, he can actually make the spread, but this actually then make means that the next knockout KOs his Mew. His Mew. And then, all, uh, then Crystal can return to his uh, really, really strong um, tag bolt, where he can just take two knockouts in one turn, which is very dangerous. And it's very close to taking the game at this point, right? Like, Hooper take care of the Mew. Yes. Doesn't get KO'd in return. Yeah. Take care of another thing. Well, there's two prize cards left. All we're going to try and do is get this tag pop powered up. Let's go. And how you can see like what kind of went wrong from last game mm -hmm. for Crystal because he didn't do like this game he didn't bench any Diden. Yep. So he has all the bench space for Hooper, which didn't work last game because he played two Diden and then there was Giachi and Absol in play anyways. So his bench was completely full all the time and he never was really able to use an Absol. And but now you can see that his list is actually pretty fine against the Pikachu Zekrom because he plays. Two Absol and uh, he plays two Hooper and three Absols. So he can use um, Hooper to attack and then Dangerous Drill just to make the um, spell tag go away. And mm -hmm. if he can do this twice, then he's already in a really, really strong position. Yeah. Which, like, we, uh, like yeah, we've see already right seen, yeah. it's already set up, right? Like, he's taken enough prize cards and Ole doesn't have a nice, clean way of catching up on the, on the thing that's doing the damage. Um, we, we see one attachment because he knows full well now that. Next turn, Chris was taking another prize card, so the, di the Blacephalon is going to do something. But really, it has the option to take a couple of chaos and some Jirachis right yeah, now. Yeah, he can, he can take out both Jirachis with Blacephalon. And he's trying to work out the maths now to try and get, make the cleanest series of uh, knockouts as, yeah. as possible with the uh, the Because side if, attack. if the Hooper is knocked out, he will draw one prize card. Mm -hmm. And then a Pikachu Zekrom will give him three additionally. So he will have two prize cards left at the end. And these two Jirachis, like, Okay, Other way game forward. plan, two, uh, two press cards left. Uh, there are two Jirachis in theory that could be knocked out. So, yep. um, so what, another attachment to the Pikachu Zekrom, which means it's ready to go for at least its full blitz. And it's going to cause a lot of havoc in terms of damage. Um, so, his hand, the rest of his hand is, is mostly items, right? Yeah. It's a good job he's not playing uh, the Gengar Mimikyu. Because that would just come in and just blow up basically uh, all of the uh, options. Yeah. No, you just go just two energy, one, right? One cool. Hit one hit knockout. Let's go. Um, but we see Crystal going for what? What did he play? Oh, he just discarded the reset stamp for Viridian. Yeah. Um, and then so now getting. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, shuffle. Okay, it's all good. Um, so what's he got? He's got. He has another reset stamp, so he can stamp. Basically, the turn next turn, right? Like his idea is, like, as if he doesn't get stamped himself, he's going to go to three prize cards. He can stamp early in return. Yeah, but now he just takes a knockout on Mew. Three prize cards left. With Mew gone, he can take uh, two of them with his GX attack. So well, and he's going to have to take another one to power up his GX attack in a single turn, because he's going to have to full blitz yeah. to power himself up. So. If he full blitzes, he doesn't, he doesn't have to because he can still use the stadium. Like he got he the stadium, the stadium with the prizes now. Yeah, and also the Tapu Koko was still not used. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the Tapu Koko prison. Um, and all in all, with the Blacephalon, is this is the turn where you can use Firework Bomb, twelve damage counters, and twelve damage counters. This is really like weird to put, but you would probably just take the knockout on Hooper because this is the most efficient way because it um, bypasses resistance. Mm -hmm. Um, and now if he has a spell tag, then he can take one knockout on Jirachi. And then, yeah, just needs another spell tag and one knockout. And so this knockout can be taken by, like we saw last game, Garchomp Guillotine as well. Yeah, so it's almost playing out the same way. Like, it, you basically fall behind, down to three prize cards, Firework Bomb, Guillotine to finish. And here we have the boys, three Malamar <laughs> and Guillotina. It's like the whole squad's all turned yeah. up at once, right? It's exactly. <laughs> everyone's here. Um, it's a okay. There's a couple of energy in discard already, so we can just start powering up the Giratina. You might as well. Okay, Mana Master have a retreat option. You can actually um, yes now retreat this with either One an attachment, attachment. Um, but it's to retreat cost, which is the same as Jirachi currently. Yeah. Um, 
but so that's just fine to have. Yeah, just kind of preemptively uh, getting ready to um, protect himself. All right, and we're just we're just basically waiting for Ola to announce. Yeah, let's have a <laughs> Yeah, yeah on, it, it on will be Hooper. interesting to see where he like if he wants to go for the Hooper or just like the Jirachi. It's like he's the Hooper's the obvious choice, but it should be um, should be fine to to kind of catch up. Um, so. Now, yeah, it looks like he actually does take the knockout on Jirachi. Yeah, I think I think he sets up the. I might set up numbers better on the Pikachu Zekrom. I might for also later. just. It's also a little bit, a little bit easier because um, now he's not relying on spell attack. Yep. Because if you take the knockout on the active Hooper. But it has, wait, your Tinagi is one hundred thirty damage, right? Yeah, so, so it's still it's still short. Still short, yeah. Um, However, if you use your um, Great Catcher. Then yep. you can take the take the knockout with just Giratina's ability yep. uh, later in the game. Yeah, so sure. Yeah, it probably made more sense to take the knockout on Jirachi. And just save the Hooper later. Yeah. And the Hooper can still be wanted knocked out by uh, Trevenant. Yep. So if you use the or first attack, which is 150, and then gets rid of two of your opponent's hand cards. And I don't think that that can be knocked out without um, the... Not plus power, uh, le lightning plus power. Electro power. Yeah, uh, elect electro power. Yeah. So and then, but if you play stamp and then attack with it, that's really unlikely to pull off. So. Yeah, as we kind of run down to only a couple of minutes left on the round. Um, so. It's gonna be a tight series. Like this is either Crusoe finds like just squeaks this out and it's a tie, or Ole has a plan. Uh, and might even could still win 2-0 in theory. Um. It's really coming right down to the to the wire. Um, so we see Thunder Mountain. You really only ever want to play Thunder Mountain on exactly the turn you're going to use it because it's you don't want to be passive with the stadium because there's it's so totally many stadiums stick, in format. Yeah. It's not going to stick. Um, and here we see a mysterious. I think it's a Zero Aura. Yeah, he yeah. just retreated, so definitely a Zero Aura. And we see the GX attack. Yes, huge. Knock out uh, one of the Malamars and Blacephalon. Going down to a single prize card remaining. Basically, it's uh, you need everything at once. He has to be able to retreat this Malamar and power up the Giratina. Yeah, so he needs energy, then two um, of the Psychic Recharge, yep. and a switch or a, sp a skateboard. So actually, the, that Thunder in that turn, not only did it get the full value from letting him GX attack, but it also kicked the Viridian. Yes. Which makes the out for Ole just that much bit harder to, to take because he has to hit the fighting energy into um, the combination of cards to take yeah. the knockout. That on the one hand, but then on the other hand, if Ole actually gets the. Um, okay, he has treasure? Combo, like if he gets a Giratina, then. Uh, I don't see. I think Chris basically loses, right? Yeah. Because the Hooper doesn't do anything and there's no way for him to gust anything active. So this is, this is basically the turning point of this game, I think. So we see treasure off the top of the with the acro bike. He's gonna d use it with Faber. Well, actually, actually, Crizzle can still win in theory, even if the active one gets still knocked out. But it's really unlikely. So, but and all it loses if he doesn't have mm -hmm. an answer right now. So, um, common mistake when you uh, put the. Uh, the Prism Star into the discard pile. Oh, Should yeah. go to the loss zone, but yeah. there's no way of recovering care. them yeah. anyway, so... Um, I think it's fine. Not the end of the world. As we have 30 seconds left on the round, um, so really coming right down to the clutch. Yes, definitely. Um, so really going to be a very close uh, series. I don't know if... I don't see a supporter in hand, so he's going to attach, he can retreat. But that's game, right? Like, he has to hit a Cynthia switch. No, no, he needs Cynthia switch and... Like, he, he has to have a draw supporter off this exact um, set of wish. And that draw supporter still has to hit him switch. He has to still get the Garchomp Giratina. Yeah. I think you go for it now. I think you just treasure... Yeah, you have to treasure your spell tag and go for your Giratina. Yeah. And just basically oh. cross those fingers. Yeah, and Martin... Seconds perfect, <laughs> says timeout. Yeah. So now it's uh, turn zero for Ole. And then that's uh, one turn for Crizzle, one turn for Ole, the second turn for Crizzle, so both have two turns basically, like Ole has one and a half turn. Yep. And uh, Chris has two turns. <laughs> He's just going, okay, what have I done so far this turn? Have I supported? No. 
<laughs> does he have it with sure. Trevenant? Did he discard? Can he, does he have enough energy to use the Trevenant attack? Is that safer? Hmm, maybe it's safer. I'm trying to work this out now. Um, Pale Moon requires an extra one, so he only needs one attachment of any color now. But then if he, ha he had that anyway, this, but this discards and KOs to take three prize cards versus just... I'm confused if this is any better than just taking the knockout. Wait, what does Pale Moon without extra attack? Um, it, it's knocked out ne at the end of next turn. Um, okay. But that's, because I think he that's also okay, I guess, because it means that you can... Is it? Because <laughs> it means that you're not getting one shot back. You're not getting one hit knocked out by the Pico Okay, yeah, Ole, Ole didn't get his um, yeah, anything so. else anyway. So this is a 1-1. One, one. Yep. Tip, typical tie, I would I, say. I mean, it, normal. this is one of the problems with Malamar. Like, even yeah, with this, these things of tag, uh, tag teams, like we said earlier on, one of the problems with Manama is the games are inherently kind of slow, because, first of all, it takes a little while, like, physically, you have to search your deck many times a turn to get all the bits, to put them on down, and then you've got to shuffle. That physically takes time to set up. And then on top of that, you're just not putting big numbers out. So yeah. you're, if you're having to two-hit, three-hit every option, well, you can't win a game in four turns, like some other decks can. You can kind of have to slowly chip your way through the deck, which leads to these kinds of ties, where it's like just, just a little bit short of what you needed. Yeah, I really liked the version which was very reliant on Giratina and spreading, mm -hmm. because getting Giratina is really easy. Yeah. But getting now, now there's so much stuff going on, and then you need the um, yeah Trevenant or Gartrom on the right turn, and then if you just like like the the Absol puts in so much work mm -hmm. um, because it kind of prevented Jirachi from doing what it's supposed sure. to do. Sure. Sure. Um, and also, yeah, the dangerous crew. Well, let's this is the thing. Is like, like, let's not forget like, the dangerous crew. Chriso's <laughs> list is kind of built with that in mind. Yeah. And, and, like, he played it really well and used the tech options beautifully throughout the series to go, look, I know you're this far away from winning, but I'm going to make you that far away from winning yeah. instead by and just pushing it a little bit back. Yeah. And since they tied now, there is no one undefeated in the tournament. Yeah. That's well, no, no one with so. all wins. They're still undefeated. Oh. Technically, neither of them lost. Yeah, technically. Neither of them okay, lost. yeah. There uh, is no one X O O. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we will take a short break and we'll be back shortly with round seven. <laughs> 